Evening yeah. Baggies fans from a cold Hawthorns, Albion have won for the third time this festive season. Uh, a 1-0 win today over Reading. Goal from Daryl DK, his first, uh, first, well, first league goal at the Hawthorns. Scored in a friendly, but I suppose they don't count for much, but his first league goal in front of the Hawthorns crowd. Um, Lewis, in that first half, it's probably the best I've seen Albion play for a long, long time, but they made hard work of it tonight. Yeah, um, for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, they were electric Albion, really good. As you say, possibly some of the best football we've seen under Corbran. Um, the, the football was unbelievable, really, at times. Pass and move, one-touch stuff, and leading to chances. The game should have been done by 20 minutes, shouldn't it? It should have been 3-0 at least, possibly 4 a um, couple of good saves, one at the post, didn't it, from Townsend. Really good stuff, and it's never going to stay like that, is it, for, for 90 minutes, and it did tail off, got a bit quiet, a bit low-key towards the end of the first half, and, and Carlos Corbran, the, the head coach in there, spoke about that, actually, about how it's important to, to manage your emotions, remain confident, don't start, I suppose, forcing it and trying too hard, and he was pleased with that, because obviously the goal on the hour from Dal DK, as you say, the match winner, um, came just after a sub, just after a couple of you know tweaks and changes, and Eastside were able to, I suppose, regain their focus and their, you know handle their emotions and, and put to bed disappointment of not having that big lead they should have had from the start and got the all important goal and you know, great diving header from DK wasn't it from a, a brilliant Malumbi cross he made the goal Malumbi I thought he was outstanding Albion's man of the match probably um, another win eight in nine it's. Uh, Quite an amazing run, isn't it? Quite, quite amazing, and uh, up to ninth, I believe, and, and very close to, to third in terms of points, which is just incredible. It's, it's a great run of form. It's a, a great way to start the new year, and uh, yeah, while all sorts of things are going off off the pitch, they keep delivering on it. So happy days in that regard. We talk about you know Dal Decal take the goal scoring headlines today. Jason Malumbi was probably man of the match, and. You know, you talk about the likes of Wallace and Thomas Asante who get the goals, but just the stats that are starting to rack up at the other end. You know, it's it's over 800 minutes since Albion conceded in open in open play. I think um, another stat that was sent in to us today uh, since Alex Palmer came into the team, he's conceded once every 150 minutes. I think that's something like like five or six clean sheets under Corbran. Um, five home wins in a row. Five home wins in a row as well. It, it, it's at the other end, isn't it, where things are making a, a big difference. And I don't want to come on here and slag off Albion players, but since Alex Palmer has come in to replace David Button, he's been exceptional, and and and, and, and that's what the foundation of it is, of the success so far has been built on. Mm. Yeah, I, I know some of my colleagues have been to to speak with um, Alex Palmer after the game. There, yet another clean sheet for him. What's that? Seven in nine under Corbrand and the only goals conceded. Sorry, seven in nine since Corbrand's first match, Sheffield United. Um, here, the defeat, the last defeat here actually, and, and the only goals conceded from the penalty spot, weren't they, at, uh, at Sunderland and against Cov? Yeah, in that one defeat to Coventry. So P Palmer has been outstanding, hasn't he? Just, just excellent. I mean, yeah, it's always easy for us to say in hindsight, but how he didn't start the season as number one is, I suppose, anybody's guess. And, and like you say, we're not hammering other players there. Obviously, it was David Button for some time, and he wasn't having the best time of it, was it? But was he? But the whole team weren't. Um, but stats weren't reading too fondly of, of Button either and change was made actually by Steve Bruce too late he would say um, but Palmer's been excellent and, and even under Corbram when Albion have been largely dominant and winning all these games Palmer has still been required hasn't he even today at 0-0 Albion were dominant missed their chances Redding had a big chance didn't they for, for Junior Hoylet at 1-0 could have been very different if, if Palmer doesn't make that save so he has been doing that in games, making those top saves, and just pretty. He, he's just commanding in everything he does, isn't he? With the ball at his feet, playing out from the back, as we see in develop under core run, he can do it. He's very good with high balls, um, crossing to the box and stuff like that, punches, and and he's clean sheet and, and goals against record speak for themselves. Quite amazing, really. Just finally, um, it's a shame that with all that's going on with the pitch, we're probably talking a little bit more about what's happening off it. And, and outside the ground today, several thousand. Uh, I wouldn't like to put my finger on how many, but over 2,000 at least. Um, but I would say several thousand fans gathered outside Halfords Lane. Um, it was absolutely chock-a-block out there. I, I went outside after the game to speak to fans regarding the the, the state of the club, the running of the club, the the, the, the second missed deadline of Gouch and Lies, 4.9, five, well, 5 million with interest um, loan and the, the 20 million pound loan taken out last week. 
Um, I just want to get a gauge of what Cor Carlos Corbrand said about. It. I know he's he's answered a few questions about the the situation in recent weeks. You know what what's he had to say about it today, Lewis? Because I'm sure while he was doing his press conference, he could probably hear some chant. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Asked asked Carlos a few questions about that. As you say, you you want to act lyrical with him about what's going on on, on the pitch, but you know, credit to him. To be fair, he understands clearly what's going on in the the wider circle and the wider scale of things, and he's very getting the impression he's very sympathetic with the Albion faithful and actually as I've written blown away with their support given what's going on um, I get the impression he feels sorry for the, what the fans are having to sort of suffer in, in regards to this he says he um, he appreciates the frustration and he respects everything they're doing regards protests which um, I think it's fair to say were ramped up today weren't they you know you've, you've had the shine the light for quite a bit but to have several thousand outside the, the ground doing it you know, not a march, but a protest at full time is, is quite significant, isn't it? And you know, the signs of signs of things ramping up. And he said, um, to you know, really um, respect what they're doing, and and I think that speaks volumes. Really, he can't. He's in a difficult position, isn't he? The head coach. He can't go into specifics about the loan. I mean, I asked about. Well, he's the only one who can really ask any questions. Yeah, well, he? well, I asked about it not being repaid, and and also how that affects his January transfer window because. You know the controlling shareholder and, and chairman, Gachan Lai promised, well said last summer that the five million was going to be repaid for the January window, and as you can read on our website now, um, which should have gone online, that, um, that actually it doesn't it doesn't change plans. It, Carlos Corbran has said from when he arrived in, in late October, so that's interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, whether you read too much into that is you know, but that's what the head coach has said. Um, I don't know. It's it's hard to speak on on his regard and say whether he's frustrated about the situation and whether whether when he was appointed in late October he was told by the club and the club were sort of had ideas that this loan wouldn't be repaid and you know whether funding had to come from somewhere else or whether there even will be any sizable or significant funding in January you know we expect is unlikely don't we given the situation around there but um, it's nice to hear him sort of really you know back really what the supporters are doing in regards to the protests which which look good and are starting to carry weight, aren't they, with what they've done after the game today. And the head coach fully respects it. He's not, I don't want to say fully behind it, but as I say, absolutely respects what the fans are having to do. Respects that it's a very difficult time for them off the pitch with everything going on and their concerns about the club. He called it a complicated season for fans and said totally understands their frustrations. So he's definitely aware of it and he's definitely um, impressed, I would say, with, with how the fans are reacting. But most of all, still... You know, selling out, home, travelling away, supporting the side really well as they have done in, in recent months under Corbyn, been a big part of it. The, I think the players, head coach, and fans are together with what's going on. You know, together on the pitch, and then obviously what's going on, you know, off the field is largely beyond anyone's control, isn't it? So, yeah, but nice to see you know the head coach speak so well of what the fans are doing. Backfiring off it, but certainly firing on it as we start 2023 with a win. For the rest of your reaction from the Hawthorns today, head to expressandstar.com.